to have here, Chad Woodard. Hi, Chad. Hey, everybody. Hi, Sherry. Chad is a fellow high performance coach. And um, I know that you also have other hats that you wear, which we'll talk about. Um, but thanks for being here, Chad. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I th we were just, just catching up. And I think just any sort of interaction right now, the world is just so excited for. So we're all becoming masters of technology and, and finding ways to still stay in touch. So I mean, no, I'm really happy, really honored that you asked me to do this. Yeah, I mean, I have said this um, on other days, but I, it bears repeating. You know, we're so fortunate to be a part of the high performance coaching group that there's hundreds of us who have been certified. And it's a really great community of support. And I love every opportunity to bring that support to others. And yeah. so that's kind of what we're doing. And Chad, I, um, I know you said this was okay, so I'm just gonna launch right in. You've yeah. had a really, really hard week. <laughs> so it's, that, doesn't even, that doesn't even touch it, does it? Uh, I, I've had a great opportunity to learn some new things and get perspective, but yeah, it's, it's been a, a very volatile week and a half, two weeks, uh, quite, quite a bit has changed, yeah. Yeah, so can you, let's just start there because I think it's really important for us, you know, to be talking to someone who's really been impacted in, in yeah. such a different way than the other people that I've been talking to. Sure. Yeah, so before before really everything kind of um, has become what it has become now, uh, I'm the owner of a physical therapy practice. And um, at our peak, we were uh, a great practice, you know, doing, um, uh, about 1.3 to 1.5 million in uh, sales uh, over a uh, given year. So that kind of, at least being able to say that, it makes people think like, oh, success and entrepreneurial and this guy really knows what's going on. And, and indeed I had a lot of trial and error. So in 2019 though, we had run into some issues and some problems. And so the business wasn't sitting in an incredibly comfortable place, right? We, we had our challenges, which since then I've really learned is a really common story. So we'd restructured and we were doing our thing. And then uh, well, a week and a half ago, part of our, of our big restructure and our big plan didn't include a complete evaporation of all of our patients, right? And which, is, which was kind of happening now, it's mandated that it's happening. And, and being a physical therapist, there's questions of, is that an essential or not? But essential or otherwise, people just aren't getting out right now. So, right. so anyway, uh, so we kind of got to a point where uh, you know, sadly, all of the patients were not able to come, which means that zero income was coming in. And so it wasn't hard to forecast that I, I wasn't going to be able to maintain the business to the level that it was. So I had to make the call to, to let my team know and to close the doors of our brick and mortar. I'm still restructuring the company a bit, but uh, to, to somehow be able to survive and, and continue on. But, um, but that current company is right now financially not able to continue on. So uh, what I was just saying to you earlier, Sherry, is the exciting part about that is uh, this company was my baby, right? It was like, like I, I, I literally, I sat and I dreamt this company up, um, you know, uh, years ago. And so it's just been like uh, for four years, four and a half years, really, it's been almost everything I've done is company. And now it's, it's kind of, it, it's changing drastically slash like this current incarnation is, is gone, right? Right. So part of that is also then financially speaking, I was on the um, kind of on the hook or as listed as a guarantor for a lot of the debt for the company. And since that company is now having to fold, I'm kind of going down with the ship uh, proverbially and quite literally. So a week and a half ago, like I was having a meeting with my team and my directors and we were congratulating each other on like, oh my God, we did it and we're going to make it. And, you know, things are working and all the indicators are pointing towards success. And then within two days, it just, the needle went from a hundred to zero. Oh, so yes, yeah, so it's been crazy, right? Isn't that wild? You know, it's wild. And oh, I want to say hi to Karen, who's saying hi to us. Karen, oh, hi, Karen. Hi. Um, what's, what's wild is you started that sentence. I don't know if you realized it, but you started that sentence with, you know, what's exciting is. And I was like, <laughs> where, where is he? You know, I mean, only only a coach, only a coach would start a sentence like that with what's exciting is, you know, yeah, I, did, I didn't know I said that. But I mean, good catch. <laughs> so so this is huge. I mean, this is your baby. Yeah. And and like you're saying that you're you're on the hook financially for so much. Yeah. And and yet, as I said to you before you, you know, before we went live, like, I can't believe you're here with me. I can't believe that you said, yeah, I'll get on a Facebook live with you right now. Like. 
I would imagine you'd just be on the floor sobbing. <laughs> why, yeah. why aren't you? Um, well, uh, I, it's a good question. I, I don't honestly know. Um, so, so I, I, I needed some time, honestly, to, to sit and go through the process of, you know, the disbelief and then the anger and the frustration and the sadness and all of that. So I gave myself that time. I think that's a really important thing. And, yeah. and there's so many, like, as, as I, I mean, even before I knew about um, high performance coaching or about Brendan Burchard or any of this, I would still would have called myself a high performer, which mm -hmm. tends to mean I, uh, don't allow myself time to process and I just keep barreling through and I ignore my feelings and whatever I need to do all of that So so I kind of gave myself a little bit of time to just Literally sit on the couch and just be sad or be angry or be whatever um, And I, I'm not gonna say that that process is totally done, but but I'm also in a place now where um, I've in, made myself reach out to people and I've made myself mm -hmm. talk to people who have been through a situation like this and and I found that that's so much more valuable, at least for me, than sitting and trying to numb it with, you know, uh, vodka and Netflix, right? Even though there's a time and place, but but getting information and knowing knowing what's going to happen or what's not going to happen, or or you know, just some sort of data points to me is so much more valuable. So that was that was like like medicine. Wow, and you know, I really want to underscore something that you just said because I think there is a a, a misconception maybe or or personal ideas about what high performing means, yeah. right? And all the things that you just said, you know, personally, right? I, I don't, you're right. Those, that's not what it's about. Pushing yeah. through, not having our feelings, not allowing ourselves to be human. That's yeah. not part of it. But yeah. I do think that part of high performance is knowing what supports us. And you're really pointing to that. Like, okay, you know, it sounds to me like you've been paying attention moment by moment maybe about you know, what's going to support me right now? And okay, you know, is it time to get off the couch? Yeah, maybe it's time to get off the couch now. And, and maybe it's time to talk to people because maybe that's going to serve me. But really looking inside, it sounds like to see what do I need in the moment to support me so that I can not like push through this, you know, and pretend like some Pollyanna, you know, happy place. Yeah. But, but also to get that grounding, to get that centered place of, I can handle this. I can get through this. Sure. Yeah, I think it, if it's been a, uh, I think a combination and something I think a lot of us are going through, Sherry, is, is everybody's processing this in, in their own way. And, and I know I'm not the only person who is experiencing an economic impact of this. I mean, I, I treat some of the best dancers in the world and they're out of work. Right, they're on unemployment right now, or yes. or they're they're desperately trying to figure out how they're going to make things meet. And they're truly they're some of the best dancers in the world. Um, I know other entrepreneurs who, I mean, grant all entrepreneurs we all know, like of course you're supposed to have six months to one year's worth of operating expenses in a savings account, so that way when things get crazy you can fall back on it. And I'm also now realizing how many entrepreneurs haven't yet had that option, yeah. right? And we're all like, oh. Well, I know I needed that, but we were building for it. We just don't have it. And now there's like, what do I, what do I do? What do I do now? Right. So, so I think there's, there's a lot of these like individual moments where it's been a very important to, to kind of understand my specific understanding, but something that's also been really helpful to me is just really taking a big step back. Right. Everything is cyclical, right? Yeah. Our, our stock market is cyclical and human, like human evolution is cyclical and we're going through different phases and, and so what I was saying to, to earlier, I have a group of other CHPCs that we all meet once a week, or excuse me, once a month. And, and we just talk about like, what are you building? What are you growing? And all of that. And so having that group has been tremendously helpful just to know I have this other group of people who are as crazy as I am. <laughs> but also something, something I said to them, you know, about yeah, just really thinking about the overall like, Nobody knows what's going to happen with all of this, and we're all stuck inside, and people are freaking out, and all of that. But I look back to um, the Renaissance. Right? The Renaissance was one of the most beautiful times in human history. It was whenever there was incredible art, and there was prosperity, and there was it was plentiful and bountiful. And the reason why the Renaissance was so amazing is because it came immediately on the heels of one of the worst times in human history, right? Like death and plague and sickness and, wow. and so
And it's, this is a, it's a pattern. So we're in the middle of right now, a tough period where we're really having to stop and reflect and, and change. And so I, I have no doubt that on the other side of this will be the new, a new Renaissance. It will be a new time of prosperity. We're just right now, we're stuck in this period of how long is this going to last and what's going to happen? And are people going to be okay? And, and those, those questions cause so much fear and anxiety, but on the other side of it, it's going to be, the, the promised land, as you, as, if you will, but um, it's hard to see that now. I love that you're bringing that up. And I'm going to come right back to I just want to say hi. I don't know if you can see. Are you, can, are you able to see the I can wonderful... see all the comments. I know. I, yeah. I see all these happy, wonderful people I love. I was just going to say that. Like, what a beautiful thing, right? Like, so here we are talking about the power of community as part of this. And then I'm just watching, like, all these beautiful faces popping up of people that we love. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining in. I, who do we we have? Lisa and Irina, Joni and Kashan. Oh, it's so fun. Um, that's so sweet. I love it. Staying close. You know that Joni. That's so true, right? Which is the big reason that I wanted to do these every day. Is that it is? It's really been a lifeline for me. And Chad, I love, I don't want to lose what you were just saying about, um, which I think is, uh, is really a part of um, how to take care of ourselves right now, is to get that bigger perspective that you were just doing right now for us. Because it's very easy, right? Everybody keeps using the word hunker down, right? Hunker down, which is a very kind of, I always get this feeling of yeah. like, I'm only going to see what's right here in front of me. But what you were doing was this big, beautiful perspective of looking at history and um, so, so a lot of people were, were posting, which I love, you know, the, this too shall pass, this too shall pass. You know, I've been seeing that everywhere. And um, it does help to hold that. It does help to have a bigger perspective. And, um, you know, if you've been following along as Brendan's been, been doing all of his trainings with us, you know, I, I feel like he's really held that line for us of, um, don't lose sight, you know, don't lose sight of the future. Do what you have to do right now to take care of yourselves, Yes. you know, but don't lose sight. And so I'm just curious, is there anything else in that that's coming up for you that you want to talk about? Yeah. I mean, you know, do, do what, what you just actually said, do what you have to do right now to take care of yourselves, but don't lose sight. And I mean, evolutionarily speaking, humans are designed not to think of what should I do a year from now? Like we are really designed and we have survived based on how can I be safe and comfortable in this moment, right? And reduce the threat. So right now there's this threat. And so so it's it's so hard to convince our psyche that yes. right now, you know, yes, every like the news is telling us, our friends are telling us, everybody's saying like imminent doom is coming. You need to board up your doors and be safe and you just need to numb. And that's the easy way to, to, to kind of get through it or uh, a possible way. I shouldn't say an easy way. It's a possible way to kind of cope with this is to just shut things off and to numb and distract yourself from it until it blows over. Right. And I respect that, you know, that, that is in some ways, that's really what people need to do because trying to face the reality is very overwhelming. So, so then in that case, so to me, it's just a matter of, yeah, the reality is kind of overwhelming right now and sure I'm scared and, and I don't know what's going to happen, but, um, but I, I also exactly like you were saying that feeling of like shelter in place and like protect yourself. Um, it, it doesn't feel uh, like m the only strategy right now. There's some of that that has to happen. But but I think if for me, if, let's say this goes on for another three weeks or another couple of months or who knows if I come out of it after that amount of time and and I have done nothing but protect and shell myself and withdraw then I, I have done that in my life before. I've had periods of time where I have had to hide and I've had to just survive, right? And that's clinical depression and attempted suicides and all of that, like that's, I know that life. And I also know that on the other side of that, whenever you eventually kind of step out into the sun again and blink your eyes, you're like, wow, what have I missed? I haven't grown, I, I've, I've existed, I'm still alive, but I, I, I'm no longer progressed, but the world has progressed beyond me. And so, sure, I'm stuck inside right now, but I mean, look, I've got technology where I can, I can <laughs> still grow. And so right now, Sherry, I'm treating this as um, in like athlete and dancer language, 
this is just a mandatory off season right now, right? And, and in an off season, what does an athlete do? They like, you're not competing anymore. You're just really trying to finally rest and recover because <laughs> you never had that chance during the season, but you're also trying to build yourself stronger. So that way, when the season starts again, you're ready, you're ready to train hard and you're ready to jump in. And so I'm treating everything right now as, oh, this off season doesn't mean that the athlete's sitting there doing nothing. Off season means that they're in some ways training harder than they ever trained before. It's just on different things. They're working on, you know, their strength and their mobility and their health and then like everything. And so if we can think of that as human beings, it's like, it's like mother nature is like, Hey humans, you need to calm down for a second. I'm going to give you an off season. So go and do it, go and build yourself. So you're ready to get in the game whenever it's time. Chad, I am so grateful for what you just said. I love, I really love that. I mean, you have just given me another huge tool. You know, this, this metaphor of off season, it's perfect, right? It's perfect. Everything that you just said. And I'm, I'm so grateful. And I think this is what I love this. My Zen teacher always says, you know, we're all cells in the body of the Buddha, right? Like, so each person, each person has something so important and essential to bring. And I feel like, you know, for me, what you just brought was that, like, it was like, oh yeah, I needed that. I needed that exact thing. Hmm. And I hope that other people listening may, may also feel that because again, and I also something else you said that really touched me. I have gone through deep, deep depressions and suicidal periods in my life. And you're right, like these feelings could mirror some of that. They yeah. could trigger some of that in so many of us. And I'm so grateful that you brought that up because I think we need to be talking about this for, for anyone who has either gone through it or has those tendencies. Mm -hmm. This is an important time for us to really pull together and, and somehow not let that isolation happen. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, of course there's the, the virus that we all are now aware of and, and afraid of, but, um, but the, the economic impact and then the, the mental health, risk is is i think what's going to take us a much longer time to dig out of wow wow so right so exactly you know what uh what we've said over and over but i feel like i just have to say it again especially as i just keep looking over at these beautiful people who are here with us right and feeling yeah. you know this sense of at least for myself what has already carried me so far has been whether it's one-on-one -on -one connections or just these sorts of community feeling but that sense that um, we're not alone. We are not alone. Yeah. And, and amongst us, which is one of the things too, that I feel so grateful about the high performance coaching community is people come from all different backgrounds, right? So here you're coming to us and talking to us. You've, you've been in this, this whole other background. You bring all that experience and it's like, there's just, every person can bring something. For sure. Yeah. yeah that, that's, that's how we exist, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. The, the strength of the many. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious, are there other things? I mean, I know for you that this has probably just been like, it's been such a out, out of the ordinary week, but anything else that's dropping in for you that you can either see too, like, okay, next week, the week after, that might really support you, that would be helpful for others to hear. You mean like, what is my plan for the next couple of weeks? Or what am I trying to you know, Or any kind of self-care plan that might... Yeah, you might have a glimpse of. Yeah, so um, uh, first and foremost, it's to get back to my habits that have served me so well. Uh, I mean, my life changed in a really, really significant, wonderful, positive way, um, you know, a year and change ago, whenever I kind of fell into this community. Mm -hmm. And and the, the most valuable thing that has happened in my life, and, and that continues, is I have my morning routine, I plan my day, uh, I reach out to people. It's everything that I have been doing um, that in this last week, honestly, I, I put on on hold. You know, I looked at my I looked at my plan and I was like, I don't know what I want to do. And so I I stopped, right? But I also I look back and I realize I I needed that time. I needed to just sit and process. Yeah. Um, so what am I gonna do in that to answer your question in the next couple of weeks is get back to that. Right, that's the most important thing. Uh, I mean, I just heard not long ago Brendan say, if you, uh, I think it was, uh, I might misquote, but if you get your morning right, you're 90% there. Yes. And, it, and it's true, right? So 
So I'm going to be doing that. And then I'm also, I'm really pivoting because everything that I've been working on, like, interestingly, I was halfway through filming a, a really, really wonderful course that I was going to put online. And I was so excited. Right now, I can't do that because I'm not really in a position where I can be selling things and bringing in money because of the financial issues that I'm about to go through. So um, I've had to kind of put all of that on hold. Yeah. So it was, it was, Sherry was just this crazy, like, all this momentum I'd been building just screeching halt. So I was like, well, what do I do now? So, you know, I, I've, as I've spoken to other people and, and gotten a lot of coaching uh, from others, I, I had so many other projects that I've been really, really passionate about that I hadn't pursued yet because they weren't going to be big income generators. But I was really excited about them because they were going to be able to provide so much value to people. Yeah. So, so like things like um, I've always I wanted to start a podcast now for a long time, but I know a podcast isn't going to bring any money, but it will bring value. And so I've held on that. I also I want to write a book and I have I have the chapters already like the outline is oh, already sad. written. And I know like a book is not going to make me rich. So now I get to I get to work on those things and and put value out into the world and build an audience and a community. And I can do all of that now. And so I'm just pivoting. And so the rest of the stuff, OK, I'm just going to shift. I'll do that later. So the next couple of weeks, I'm going to work like a maniac and be able to launch my podcast the first couple of seasons and start writing the first chapter of my book. Why not? Right. Chad. Oh. I can't tell you that is, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to hear, um, you know, exactly like, it's, it's exactly that pivot, right? Okay, I thought, I thought my life was gonna look like this. But over here, I have these other things that have been calling to me. And like you're saying, um, they're, they're not only going to serve so many other people, but we also know, like you said, it's gonna serve you, right? Yeah. They're going, they're building blocks to yeah. to what you're going to be bringing in later but like you're you're just saying like i'm excited about these things i'm going to turn my attention to these yeah wow yeah that so that's that's the plan and then and then honestly then the um so back to my habits uh pivot and then be productive again and then uh, for for me i know my mental health is uh, you know things like this where i'm able to talk to people and still communicate and still have a community that's that's paramount if i just sit still and and don't really engage with anyone then no good that's not good for me at all yeah yeah oh chad this has been so amazing i'm i can't even tell you, i'm so grateful that you said yes that you showed up yeah and, and that you are willing to also like be so vulnerable and share with us i really appreciate that because for sure. i do think that that's also one of the things that can be such a, a service to to everyone right now is for all of us to show up with whatever's going on for us for real mm -hmm. you know and and that really i just i'm so grateful to you sure well and happily no one will see this video i know this is just between the two of us <laughs> and wait how does this how does this work again i just uh, this is a new all the technology no I'm, I'm happy i agree sherry i think we all just have to be really open and honest with each other because Deep down, everybody's going through their experience, but um, but there's nobody I've spoken to yet that doesn't have some level of anxiety or fear about what's happening and hardships. So I, I think it's really important for us to not not just pretend that we're just we're muscling through and everything is fine and and not talking because that will fester, right? And it then becomes something destructive. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to close, but I'm just curious, is there anything that, that we haven't had a chance to talk about that you really feel like you'd love to say or share before we go? Ooh, closing words, um, just find love, right? Find joy, there's, there's uh, it, right now, that's, that's kind of what I'm doing to get through this is um, in some ways there's, this is such a beautiful opportunity because when I think of my life and our lives before this happened, most of us were kind of sheltering in place anyway, right? We would we would stay in our apartment, we would numb ourselves with TV or with social media, we would go to a job that we hate, and then we'd come home, we'd fight with our significant other, we'd go to bed angry and then wake up the next day and do it again, and that was freedom. That was freedom. And now that we have been told, hey, uh, it's better if you stay inside, now we say, oh, my life and all of this, and people are starting like, there's more people outside right now exercising and enjoying the sunshine than I, I have ever seen in New York City. 
So it's right now we're being given a gift just to have some perspective. And I think that by the end of this, so many people right now are going through the process. And by the end of it, we'll say, oh, I think I kind of figured out what life is supposed to be about. And now I'm going to I'm going to change everything. And what a gift that is. Go and change everything if that's what you need to do or double down on the things that you just love doing. But find the things that bring you joy now, because right now we all have some clarity. Right now we have that opportunity to see. So that's that's my positivity of all this. Wow, Chad. I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad I asked that last question. <laughs> wow, that was beautiful and true. And I hope that people really take that to heart, you know. Thank you. And I suppose say hi, Lynn just joined us. Hi, right Lynn. Here. Hi, Lynn. And thank you to everyone else who's been here and commenting. And it's just I, I feel the love, I feel the connection. Chad, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Sherry. It's been, it's so nice to see your face and to see you without a hat on. I almost I don't know. even know. I, right? <laughs> it's one of the changes that's happened to me from the... <laughs> Big changes. Big oh, changes. Oh, no, no, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm so grateful, Sherry. Thank you for doing this and, and being such a voice in this community. You're, you are loved by so many. Oh, back at you, Chad. We'll see you soon, okay? okay. All right, bye. All right, bye-bye.